Hi, I'm Melvin York, and I'm with Gardening with Daddy Pete. Uh, last time that uh, we spoke, and we uh, were talking about trees in the landscape, we were going to talk about trees and shrubs. Uh, this will be part two of trees and shrubs in the landscape. Uh, we talked about the deciduous trees last time. Those are trees that lose their leaves in the fall. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about some of the different types of evergreen trees uh, that you can use in your landscape. And there's just so many different types, even from dwarf varieties to semi-dwarf uh, until the usual tree that grows its full height and width. Uh, I'm going to give you just a quick overview of some of the different choices you have, and they will be more. But this may be get your brain thinking as you're designing the landscape when we get done with this uh several podcasts i'm hoping we can go through and give you some ideas if you're designing your landscape yourself for the first time or if you're redesigning or uh, redoing your landscape and you want to change things around a little bit at those times we'll be talking about focal points where to where not to plant and uh, some of the good things that will bring you the most uh for your uh buying power when you're buying your plants and your trees, uh, low maintenance plants, uh, maybe even talk with some deer resistant type later on when we get into the landscape. But we're talking about evergreens today. Evergreens do shed their needles or their broad, little broad leaves, so to speak, at a different time than the deciduous. When the deciduous uh, drops their leaves in the fall and goes all winter without them, a evergreen, usually like a pine, a cedar, a lot more, a lot of your conifers like that, fir trees and all, will lose their needles in the late spring, early summer. I have a lot of people that ask me what's wrong with my tree. Nothing is going through its cycle. You'll notice that they do put on, the, if they are a conifer type or a cone producing tree for their seed, you'll notice that they put it on earlier and then they'll be shedding those leaves is usually the way it works. Now, there might be something different, but uh, usually that's the way it works. So I'm going to give you just a quick overview. You can look at the, I was there, there are just so many different varieties. There's no way we can go over them. So, you know, grab the internet and go to that. And these are different types. Type trees. Now, as we're talking about some of these trees, you're going to think that it's the, the normal cedar or pine or whatever that you see out here. And that's not the case. There's different cultivars. There's different varieties that has been developed and found and is sold in your local nursery that is totally different than what you see uh, taking the trip or riding down the road. Uh, one of the things is uh, that you do is uh, it's all together that uh, everybody sees hanging around are cedar trees. There are so many different cedar trees now, varieties. Uh, that may be something that uh, you want to look at. Now, be careful. Some of these things uh, grow up to 140 foot tall. Uh, they do have a spicy scented wood, thick branches. Um, you know, the thing of it is a lot of things can hide in those. They're light to dark, even pale blue in some of the colors are gorgeous. It's a good thing for uh, birds to make nest in if you're after bringing in uh, birds to your yard. You know, it's a good place for those to nest. It's a good wind barrier. Uh, so cedars are nice. They're usually uh, really Pretty much uh, a strong tree. About the only thing that really bothers those much would be, and it would have to be a pretty hard ice storm. Uh, that usually gets them the most. Uh, I'm not saying that wind can't, but they can do that. Fir trees is another example. You know, we grow a lot of different firs here for Christmas trees, but there's also firs uh, for the landscape uh, that grows larger. A lot of these would grow larger if they wasn't for Christmas tree, but uh, some of the fir tree varieties can go as much as 200 foot tall. Uh, they do have different colors. You've got, uh, so there's some blue fir, there's some with different tints. So that's something you may want to look at depending on the the size again they are dwarf semi-dwarf and uh, the regular varieties and that pine trees we think of the pine trees as just a, a regular pine tree now a pine there are different varieties of pine trees there one good thing about a pine tree they're hardy they usually hang around they take the wind well they're messy uh 
they do shed a lot of those needles we were talking about, some of them the longer leaf and the cones. Uh, their cones are usually large size and they shed. So wherever you plant them, uh, you are going to have a mess in the yard to rake or clean up. Uh, so if you're planting them uh, somewhere that's not going to be part of the yard that you mow or you're just leaving it natural, that okay. But uh, keep in mind, these are a high-maintenance plant in the yard. The juniper trees, junipers grow uh, just about everywhere. They almost resemble a lot of the blueberry bushes on some of them. Uh, they grow in rock areas. They grow in poor soil. Um, they usually uh, do pretty well. They do pretty well in the, in the southern region. They, they do okay. Uh, another good one's holly trees, so many different varieties of hollies. Uh, we've got the old American holly. It likes to grow kind of shaded like um, in the woods, but then you have Burford hollies. Uh, and, and this is just, I mean, there's such a variety of different hollies that grows outright. Make sure that uh, when you're planting hollies, do not plant up next to the house as ornamentals for small ones. Uh, now, they do have what we call a soft-touch holly, which is a small, very, very dwarf bush, which is great, and that's fine uh, up around the house. But some of these Burfords and things, they would crack your foundation, and they actually, even if you keep them trimmed, gets a stump on them, that'll go a foot or more across. So you need to watch out for that. Uh, but again, very beautiful. Magnolia trees, there again is... There have been so many different varieties that's been developed in magnolias. Beautiful tree, waxy leaf, dark green, beautiful flowers, terrific smell, but messy, messy, messy. Again, you have the seed cones uh, that fall everywhere. Leaves uh, are big, hard leaves. Not uh, They're a lot thicker, a lot more to deal with. Uh, again, magnolia is beautiful. Put it out somewhere that you're not going to be mowing around, or you do have quite a bit of uh, maintenance to do. Now, one way to get rid of some of that maintenance is a lot of people let them leaf and grow straight to the ground. Some people cut them up so high, like you do a regular tree, and the air can get under them. Either what you prefer, you can do. Uh, I personally have seen areas where I do like to see the magnolia tree that grows from the ground up with its limbs and foliage. And then there's times where I would rather see them the other way. If they're more of a door for semi door, I think they look better trimmed as just a regular tree. But again, that's all to do with taste. Thuja trees, um, and this is going to be under your arborvitis. Uh, there's so many different varieties, great trees uh, for borders. Uh, they're long lasting. They do get uh, sometimes you can see those 150, 200 feet tall. And with that, cryptomeria, I have uh, three cryptomerias in my landscape. Beautiful, soft like. Uh, they're almost like an individual limb and clusters of evergreen. Uh, a lot of times they call them the Japanese cedar or Japanese redwood. Uh, if you have uh, problems saying cryptomeria, um, you know, just call them a Japanese cedar or Japanese redwood. These trees can grow up to 230 feet tall. Now, I set these three out, and uh, in the poorest ground that I had, I have not given them any attention. These are growing limb from ground up. Are amazing. Mine are probably already over 60 feet tall. They grow fast. And the stump at the bottom right now, I would dare say is probably close to 18 inches to 20 inches across. Um, they're a hardy tree, beautiful tree. Uh, they do shed their bark underneath the tree. Uh, it does get messy, uh, but not so much out away from it. Uh, it's like it sheds it kind of straight down so it's not bad but a cryptomeria uh the ones that i have are yoshinos they're more of the yellow a little bit of a yellow tone in the winter time and then the green which is beautiful they do have the uh, black dragon yoshino which is a darker variety uh and then of course there's others too but that's just to name a couple uh 
hemlock trees. Hemlock trees, it seems, uh, took a toll here around North Carolina for some reason. It, I don't know if it's been disease or what, but um, they seem to do better in a colder climate for some reason. Uh, I don't know why, but it just seems like it, it really does. They actually prefer a higher altitude and some of has got a lot of rain. They just don't handle the dry um, drought or dry spells that we have in the Piedmont, North Carolina here during the summer. And of course, then you have spruce trees, cypress trees, uh, you know, um, again, uh, you've got uh, the Leland cypress, which has got a bad rap over the years. There's probably 200 different cypress varieties. Some of those grow as much as 200 feet tall. And uh, a lot of times, um, the Leland has actually got such a bad rap because people are they used them to plant um, actually for borders. And the thing is, they would plant them so close, they would grow in together and in these hot summer months or whatever, there was no air can get through them. They can actually choke themselves out. Makes the plant weak, great uh, setup for disease or whatever. Uh, when planting these trees, look on how far they're going to spread out and keep those trees planted like that. Uh, that gives you a healthy tree. You're going to have a tree that will last for years, and you'll have usually a disease-free tree. So make sure that uh, you do that. Uh, there's just so many different options that we can go on and on on uh, um, evergreen trees. Actually, there's some camellias. We can classify those in shrubs or even to a tree because they do grow some heights of uh, 12 to 15 feet on a lot of them. They may be some even taller. And we'll check on that variety too. But again, that's an evergreen. Uh, they different camellias bloom at different times. You've got some that bloom in the fall, some that don't tolerate cold weather uh, or a frost. You've got the uh, what we call the winter rose ones. That's what the old people call the camellia that would bloom uh, right after Christmas, first of January in our part. Still cold weather, big, huge, and they do set their uh, buds early, just like a. Um, an azalea does. So you want to make sure if you do any pruning on them, you do it right after the bloom on those. That's just to kind of give you a variety of the different things that we can look at as evergreens. The landscape, what we want to do is we want to go over uh, in part three, we're going to go over some of the different deciduous and non-deciduous evergreen type shrubs for your landscape. And then hopefully in part four, we'll go over some design um, techniques and kind of give you a few hints there hints there so uh we do have at daddy peak we can take care of all your planting news with our soils we have planting mixes perennial mixes and all when we get ready to do all of this landscape go to our website daddypeaks.com and i think you'll uh, find it quite interesting sign up for our monthly email that's free to you also on the podcast uh sign up for that listen to us Send us in. We'd love to hear uh, your comments, your questions, and that way we can get them on and hopefully answer uh, some of the questions you may have. Uh, while you're there, check out our different products to use in your different gardening. Uh, we'd love for you. There will be a usage chart there that helps you go through that. And also look at our About page. Well, it's been fun, and we'll go on. This has been part two of trees and shrubs in the landscape. Uh, I'm Melvin York, and uh, we'll go back, and what we'll do is we'll, next time we'll go to part three, and we'll start talking about some of the shrubs in the landscape for you. So this is Melvin York again, Gardening with Daddy Pete, and we'll see you next time.